Good health affects not just our bodies, but everything from education to sustainability. That's why we invited three female founders in the health and well-being space, each seeking to improve people's well-being in different ways. Uta Mikaela Arndt founded We Are Elima to educate children and young women in undeserved areas and combat the stigma associated with bodily processes, while Jessica Hallam created Demi Bami to provide practical and achievable sustainable solutions. Lastly, Nidhi Sharma made Half Life to Health to empower women to understand how their bodies function to ensure healthy lives. After their presentations, they kindly took questions from the audience. Thank you all for your wonderful and insightful presentations. I would like to get things rolling by first asking all three of you a more generic question before diving into more specific ones based on your topics of discussion. And I would like to take the order in which the presentations were made. So I will start with you, Ute. And then the first question I would like to ask is, um, in your question, like, you know, in educating, for example, women health in Tanzania, what has been the biggest challenge you have faced so far? I mean, in the last 10 years, you know, I'm doing this like more or less 10 years. The biggest challenge was actually in Europe, to be honest, working in marketing and doing campaigns on new products. So talking to people who are educated, like media, that is the biggest challenge because media... You know, alone to show a pet with a blood, which is now a little bit more normal, is a huge thing still. But going to, say, here to Tanzania, the biggest challenge is still talking about periods. The minute you ask the question, you know, um, like, are you on your period in case a woman holds her belly, for example, or says she has pain? The minute you say the word period, it's like uh, the room crashes. Okay, that's interesting. Uh, I would like to go. I would like to ask um, Jessica. What about you? What has been the biggest challenge so far for you? I think for for us, the biggest challenge is um, developing the products. Uh, try to be innovative because um, uh, we have to be sustained, right? So we have. Uh, employees now working with us full time um, although there have been um, uh, from the uh, the workshops that we teach at, at, at the end they work uh, with us um, we are a team of 12 now so we have to sustain them um, but um, how to sustain them is we have to create a better product and innovative product because most of our product is reusable, which which means you, you only need to buy one in <laughs> forever, right? <laughs> For your lifetime. For example, um, reproduce natural deodorant. It's from alum stone, right? Uh, you can wear it for 10 years. You don't have to buy every year or every month. So with the same amount of money, like... Um, with the chemical deodorant, which you buy like every month, like this this product you you don't need to buy anymore, and it's multifunction as well. Yeah, uh, you can use it for your pimple, you can use it for your um, wounded skin. So it's um so uh we have to think uh more and more products basically that can um reduce our waste by looking at the mirror what we need at home <laughs> that's that's my challenge but it's good for me because it's uh it changed my home um because i always um look at my products in our house which which are the uh still the chemical ones um and i have to change that um or the the plastic one because now there are still many skincare products using plastic, although they are natural inside, right? So now we are moving towards skincare as well. Uh, we try to develop more into skincare that uh, doesn't use plastic case anymore. So that's also our biggest challenge because cosmetics produce about 15% of the waste at home for, for, for women. So um, yeah. 
and also education that's also uh, play a really really big part uh, for example uh, we are talking about menstruations right uh, during menstruations uh, we produce a lot of waste from the single use pad right uh, from the single use men's pad during period it produced 11,000 uh, plastics which goes to the river in Indonesia nobody really process it further <laughs> so um uh nap uh nappy 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 liner uh you know the panty liner the panty liner and also the menstrual pad the single use one uh been found a lot in the river because uh the waste management here is very bad so we have to educate um how we transform our habit and uh, move into the reusable um, menstrual pad that's made from cloth but they have to wash it right so we have to teach them how to wash it like you're washing your clothes basically like you're washing your underwear so changing habits um, educate how to change habit is really important because um, it's a challenge right yeah yeah, okay. I like that you said that you use your home as an example. So you see things that need to be improved upon and you want to improve upon it. That's really that's really insightful. And so the last um same question goes to Nidhi. What has been your biggest challenge so far? In I think uh, for us biggest challenge is uh, people will be super enthusiastic when they need to start. They were like, "Hey, I'll do this. I'll make all the changes. I'll go out. I'll do work. I'll do some workout. I'll do some exercises." But that enthusiasm will stay just for a week or a couple of days, and then they were like, "Oh, this is super boring. I cannot do it again and again. And my work is very demanding." I, I think that's the story with everyone. And that's why I think uh, the key where people need to focus is sustainable. Do take take a task which is super, super sustainable for you. Don't try to do an hour of workout. Just think of 10 minutes of walking, 10 minutes of anything. Start with that and slowly build that 10 to 15 and 15 to 20 and make it so, so convenient. I have, uh, so we run program and there, there are many people who will join in. Most of the people will drop out after a month, but then there are few who will stay for three, three months and six months and they share their experience, uh, how initially they were, they, they hate to do any kind of exercise. And now eventually after six months, they are loving it. They really look forward towards those exercises. So I think uh, as um, you know, all the other speakers have added a lot of education, a lot of uh, you know uh, knowledge has to built in in the process because they need to think about the end result. If they are not taking action now, we are aging, right? It is getting harder for us to hold the muscle mass. It is getting harder for us to get in shape. So if we are not taking action now, moving forward, it is going to be tough. So always try to put in that education piece in where you need to tell them this is how it is going to impact. This is a time where you need to take action. So I think it is guidance along with education, which is uh, yeah required. And it's the biggest challenge as well. Yeah. And I think also tying to what you said about people quitting after one week, I think a lot of people place a lot of emphasis on motivation. Motivation is good as a starter, but more important than that, I think it has to be discipline. So that's the only way you can actually sustain what you're doing. So yeah, that's um, that's um, quite um, good. Okay. So the next question I would ask Ute is um, how industries perpetrate the shame cycle by pushing to sell more products and you know, for stains and dirt. Can you speak more about how that happens? How do industries also foster this shame cycle that just makes the whole period thing bigger than it actually is? I mean, having been part of this industry, I must admit the industry plays a big role because I mean, um, let me take Procter & Gamble as an example. Procter & Gamble, huge American company. They are market leader in a lot of countries, also here in Africa. Uh, big, big, big in Europe and America. And what they do is they explain to women, you need to buy these products 
because um, you are dirty. These products are for stain prevention. So because we all don't want to run around, you know, all of us women um, who have periods, we all don't want to run around in and, and showing off that we are bleeding. Of course, we think, oh, my God, we are dirty. We need to use these pads. So we have been trained. We have been so auto automated. You know, it's almost like our brain is automatically going to the shop. You take these pads, you put them in the, in the knickers, off you go every month. That is why it is so difficult for also for the new comers like period underwear or cups to break this um, purchase behavior. And the industry pays, a, um, they have so much money for advertising, you know, and it's not only Procter, it's also, you know, KC, Johnson & Johnson, they are big, big companies also in Japan and in China. And they all basically play the same program. You're dirty, you're losing something no one wants to see, so hide it. Here we have the, uh, the products for stain prevention. And that's so bad. So, for example, in Malaysia, Malaysia, they have extra long products. So think about their product is like 50 centimeters, you know, their night product. I worked in Malaysia. That's why I know it. So think about the waste. And the women use one or two products per, per night. Think about the waste we are soiling the globe with every bloody day with these products. And they all have plastic. And, and forget the waste for a minute. It's also intimate health. It's so bad because we all run around with this plastic stuff between our legs or we close our intimate area with a tampon, which is so bad. But the industry plays upon it, plays upon it, and we are, yeah, like, I don't know, automated. We just go and buy it. So that's a big, big, big thing. And I must say the other big thing is actually the religions. Because and all of them, you know, there's no no one better than the other one. And it's not because I I'm not I am a religious person. So, but you know, they all play with the fact that women are dirty when they're in the period, and that's just such a lot of bullshit. Sorry. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I think with the time and you can see I'm quite passionate um, about this. Sorry, what did you say? I didn't get that. No, I'm sorry. I'm quite passionate about this topic because I think there's so much uh, <laughs> yeah. flying around. Yeah, we can see that. Yeah, and I think, yeah, like you said, with the I've come across a couple of women say that they feel a certain type of way touching their own blood. So they are not very comfortable using menstrual cups, for example, or using the washable period um, panties. So they rather just use the disposable yeah. ones that are like, no, no, it's bad for the environment because these things take years, if not... Um, decades to decompose and yeah most people don't really do anything about properly recycling these things so yeah that's a good point um to jessica i have a question so somebody's asking um you mentioned that your energy and strength comes from your personal experience and so this one is close to home when you described the dire state of the environment your child your child cried and said to you why don't you just fix it and this has been your driver since. How important is education starting from the core of our foundations in the family home? How what, sorry? How important is okay. education starting from the core of, of our foundations, so in the family home? Yeah, I think it's really important to get the family support. Um, yeah, because, uh, yeah, I think if uh, that ex it's not accident yeah I mean like the my children didn't cry that time when I told them that Indonesia will be drowning in the next 20 years maybe if they they're laughing about it I wouldn't like this energized bunny like now maybe <laughs> you know um, it's because like I always think how they react um, with that, that simple topic um, they really imagine that they'll be drowning in the um, in the age of 27 years so you know we as a mom um, uh, you know concerned about about their uh, their their future right not just um, like now but uh, we also think that um, how can the children can think further more than we as an adult and um also, because of my daughter, uh, the the little one said to me that, why don't you fix it? 
um, because she's so pure. She's only like three and a half years old. She said, mom, why don't you fix it? Uh, it's a trust that we as a mom, we can fix it, you know, because we have the power to fix it. And she trusts her mom that mom can fix every, every problem, right? Um, so we have more energy that um, I have to solve this problem for them. And um, yeah, I think uh, from that on, since I've been doing the Mibumi, my husband also um, give me some advices about um, he as a guy, what he needs, right? Because we also don't know, we are women, what we know what we need, but we don't know a guy. Sometimes he also relate to himself. He said like, you know, we as a guy, we don't really need this much cosmetic. <laughs> we, he, he, doesn't really, he doesn't really wear moisturizer every day. So we start to rethink about it again, right? Oh, we don't, do we really need that? Like, um, or it's just because of, you know, the advertisement that we've been influenced to buy um, more and more. Uh, so um, it makes me want to learn more, basically. Um, the basic needs that we uh, we have um, because our skin produces oil already, right? So we we don't really need that amount of product like in, in the market. Um, so like also the simple thing, like my, my husband also remind me like um, whenever he goes to the toilet, he always turn the lights off because the sign lights are already there. Um, but me... As a person, sometimes automatically, automatically in the morning, your hands turns the lights on, right? So, and then my husband, see, you care about the environment, but you always turn the lights on in the morning. So, we, we help each other. So, I think um, it's a good thing that we do this and we talk about this in our house because we learn each other because each of our uh, family has their own character. And um, they have their own solutions. And also my uh, sister-in-law, because we live in the same house, she's a doctor. She doesn't really care about plastic because she needs plastic in, in, in a hospital, right? She used a lot of plastic. But, um, and she, she also buy a lot of, uh, uh, you know, takeaway because she doesn't cook. But what I learned is since uh, I'm doing the Mibumi is that um, she let me produce the things that she needs. Jess, why don't you produce hat that's upcycled from uh, fabric waste? Um, the, the the you know the medical the medical caps uh, that's made from fabric. So since then, during the COVID, I produced that upcycled um, all-in-one caps, which can be used for chef, can be used for uh, doctors, can be used for. Um, motorcycle um, who use uh, the public motorcycle because they use a public health helmet yeah so uh yeah it improved me to produce a product that uh, uh a solution for different character although we all only need like from the same house because uh yeah we are living with a different character people so yeah i think uh support from family is really needed and uh, it plays a big role too. Yes, playing to each other, to everybody's strength. That's very good. And question for Nidhi. What does a sustainable lifestyle in the context of a healthy living actually mean? Because I know you also mentioned sustainable living in the first question I asked you. So what exactly does that mean? So uh, with respect to sustainable lifestyle can be different for different people with respect to their goals. So I like to run and for me running long is more like what uh, my energies uh, are probably, you know, close to me. But then there will be a different kind of uh, sustainable step for someone like who loves to do stretching or some kind of yoga and breathing exercises. And uh, then uh, other people can like to lift weight. The other people can they just can go and play some kind of sports right so the selection of activity can be different for different people based on their own character right because we all like uh, different kind of stuff we all have different uh, 
our preferences with respect to our taste and cuisine and our references. So that can be like totally different. What we need to understand here is that we need to engage our muscles in some way. Okay. So if you don't use it, you lose it. So if you are not engaging, so a very good example is these days we don't get wisdom tooth. So our jawline used to be very, very big. Uh, 50 uh, years uh, back but now it is reducing because we are not chewing much right and the 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 teeth which were uh, at the back of the jawline are not coming these days it is uh, you know eventually uh, are are halfly out or not there and then doctor is just removing them as wisdom teeth because we don't need those kind of teeth these days because all the food is super cooked and we are not chewing too much so this is a natural way your how your body will react. So you really need to engage your muscles. Whatever you want to do, a sustainable step, like go and play for 10 minutes with your kid, any kind of a sport, that can be a thing. You don't want to do that, you can do uh, Surya Namaskar or uh, yoga for 10 minutes. If you want to do something, you can just quickly go out, run for 10 minutes. If you want to work on your pelvic floor muscles, 10 minutes, of breathing exercise of core engagement will help you in strengthening your pelvic floor muscles and uh, help in postpartum recovery so the, the the ways can be different but it should be that first step which is doable for you and again uh, with respect to mothers we also need to understand they don't have time to go out in the gym they have to do something with their kids at home and so for them 10 minutes sustainable thing will be probably you know play with the ball with your kid at home and at the same time you all are moving around sitting down and standing up and doing some kind of activity so i think it can be different for different one but we need to understand that we need to engage our muscles how we build our muscles are by putting pressure on our muscles so you know it should be like uh, effort from your end and when you put effort what will happen your muscle fiber will break and when you eat when you sleep when you drink there is a recovery process and then you make strong muscles. So strong muscles are like, I always say that it is like a, a retirement plan, right? You put money for your retirement. You really need to put muscles for your retirement. So, yeah. So find what you enjoy um, and also um, be aware of your reality and right. do it no matter how little, even if it's just 10 minutes, just do something. Yes, thanks. So Ute, I have one question for you. You mentioned in your presentation that we should make room for periods in workplaces and schools and universities. What, in what form will, make, will making room for periods in these places take? What do you mean by that? Can you speak more on that? Yeah, I mean, in when you when you go to normal schools, say across Europe, then this is like yes, of course, um, teachers talk about it, but maybe um, during a biology session, you know, this is how the bee gets a baby. And this is, by the way, how we do, he, how we make babies. And, you know, this is like um, a, a fast and quick topic. And it there's not a lot of room for periods. So that means if girls, for example, experience first time periods, why is in schools, why is there no room for girls where they can go to if they have pain or if they, uh, you know, to talk to someone, you know, they often di um, discover the first periods with a, what I call an accident. So there's blood, blood somewhere and then they are extremely embarrassed. They either call their mom or a friend are crying because they're extremely under stress. So there's no one actually they can go to in a school. Or for example, if um, you are at work in a work environment, where do women go to? And I mean, of course, they are a little bit more experienced with periods, but periods also change. So when you are coming back from motherhood, for example, very often your first periods are extremely heavy. And you often don't know because no one talks about to you. No gyno tells you, okay, this is happening really to your body because the gyno is all about the bloody child. And, you know, I'm, I'm not that I don't like children, don't get me wrong, but there's no room for periods so for the for the cycle so where do women in the workplace can they go to their boss and say oh i actually have period pain is there a room for women is there something where they can what do women in the workplace do if they forgot any sort of protection at home 
you know, they have to shamefully ask maybe a colleague or uh, even, you know, almost 20% of women in Europe still to use actually tissue, uh, which is quite um, a compelling number. You know, if you think about, um, yes, there's money in Europe because they often either have, you know, are un have unexpectedly their period is stronger than they um, thought, they, for they don't have enough protection or whatever. And what I mean with room for period is that we take this as an, take a flu. And this is maybe a stupid example, but take a flu. If you have a flu, you can ask someone, oh, can you give me a tissue? No one would look at you embarrassed and say, oh my God, she has a flu. No one. If you say in your workplace, I have a flu, there would actually be people t telling you, oh, I bring you a ginger tea. But in your period, you know, there's no room 